Before I say what I normally say, hello and welcome to Movie Talks. Uh, I've got a short announcement. Um, this is the future me before I did the actual episode. Uh, I've had some real troubles. I've tried to upload this about four times now, the movie. But Disney is really, really tight and all the little clips of Avengers, it won't let any clips whatsoever pretty much go on to YouTube. So in this episode, it's going to be a lot shorter because I've taken out all the uh, clips. Uh, it might not be as interesting as with the clips, but it's just Disney's got copyright out on pretty much all clips. Images are right now, so I've replaced the clips with images and audio of me talking about the images and what would have happened in the clips. So it might be a bit of a different episode. I might say um, we're about to watch a clip and then not watch a clip. So that's basically all that's happened. Um, so yeah, this video is now officially the longest video I've spent my time on. And it's still not brilliant because obviously the clips aren't out. I, th I think I spent about a week now, maybe over a week, uh, doing this clip, um, this whole episode. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoy it and please comment below on how the clips would have made it better. Uh, yeah, let's start watching it. Hello and welcome to today's episode on Movie Talks. Today we are going to be talking about Avengers Age of Ultron, which is the second Avengers movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe build-ups. So as the second movie in the Avengers series, we already know all the characters in Avengers. Um, so they don't need an introduction like the first movie. So in this movie, they literally just kick it off with a massive fight scene. Yes, um, uh, the Avengers um, killing off the few uh, Hydra agents that are still left and getting back all S.H.I.E.L.D.'s belongings. Because in the last couple of movies, we've obviously had Captain America Winter Soldier where um, S.H.I.E.L.D. was invaded by HYDRA, and it's all gone um, wrong, really. So it all kicks off with a fight scene, which is really interesting, and I'm going to show you that now. So the fight scene in this movie is a bit like the fight scene at the end of the first Avengers movie, apart from uh, this one, it's a lot shorter, and it's more moving around. Like It's all, it's all done really quickly, and draws your attention into the movie. Um, it's, it's a really good way, I think, to start the movie. It just gives the, just the power, really. Due to copyright, I've, I've had to change the clip, uh, which was an amazing clip. It was a two-minute video of the actual fight scene to this image. But it, it's still as good, but obviously not brilliant. Um, so, yeah, I did upload this video a few days ago, but I've had to change it because of copyright. So that's why I haven't done a video in a little while. Uh, so, yeah, in this uh, line, you can see uh, all the Avengers all in one bit and it's a really interesting image and I think with the fight scene it goes really well because it all goes really really quickly and then they all suddenly just appear in this massive line and then go back into fighting. I think it's it's really quite interesting. As with some of Marvel's other movies, they're, they're starting to add some humour. You've, you've got the characters and now they're going to add some humour just to draw the audience's attention and just make it a good movie because obviously all Marvel movies are pretty much good, apart from a few of them, like Hulk and, for instance, uh, so on. Uh, but no, they're adding humour. Uh, for instance, in the first scene, uh, they've got um, where Cap uh, Captain America says, because um, Iron Man swears, and then Captain America says language. And then that's a joke that keeps being played around, like it would do in real life, but in the movie. So you can definitely see that Marvel has tried to make an effort with the humour. And I, I really liked it. That's what made the film really, really good. Um, yeah, it was a really good movie. And they've added quite a lot to it. You've got stuff like the, the Hulkbuster is brand new. It's for uh, when Hulk gets angry and if he ever goes off. It's for uh, it's like it's basically a massive Iron Man suit that Iron Man goes inside to in his suit. Which is it's a suit for a suit. And it's the size of the Hulk. But if you think about it logically, the Hulk is indestructible and you can't really kill him. So the Hulk's just going to tear the Hulkbuster to pieces until there's nothing of him and then eventually kill Tony. But that's not really what happens. In this scene, you've got Tony Stark's uh, new toy, uh, the Hulkbuster, which is just a really epic machine. And he is fighting the legendary Hulk, because obviously a fight wouldn't be a fight without an opponent. And the opponent in this match is the Hulk after he has been angered by Scarlet Witch who has played mind tricks with him. Now, it truly is the most epic fight there has been. Well, obviously because it's two good guys, but the Hulk, when he gets angry, is uncontrollable. So that is why Tony has built this Hulkbuster to protect the world from the Hulk when he gets uncontrollably angry. So this is what's happening in this scene. 
And as you can see, their fists are bound together um, because they they really get into it. And it's a really like um, hard match because obviously you got the all powerful Iron Man suit and then the Hulk. So we don't really know what's going to happen at the start. Let's just zoom in on their fists. I mean, you can really see there's a lot of force going into their fists, and it just shows just how powerful the two opponents are and what a great match this is. So for our last photo, we've got um, the Hulk and the Hulkbuster uh, really pounding together. And it's just um, a strange scene, really, and it must have been really hard to film because obviously you've got Hulk and Iron Man who are friends when they're not in their suits of armour and Hulk's not in uh, this great big monster thing. But uh, when they get angry, they're really going for it. Again, this scene, obviously I had a clip of it to show you. It had a lot of comedy in it as well. But obviously uh, Disney's gone really overprotective with this movie. And even like a 30 second clip it is copyrighted. So I can't show that in. So instead I'm doing the photos instead. Again, even this scene brings an aspect of comedy into um, this film. I mean, the the film is mainly about comedy, I believe. Um, yeah, comedy is really what gives it all that the movie really is. Um, and there's even another scene where, uh, for instance, Thor's hammer, they're all trying to lift it, and that that's a comedy scene, because Captain America actually manages it to li uh, lift it just a tiny bit. Um, but no, it's all based around comedy, the whole movie. The only thing that's wrong, um, well, that's, like, different with the Thor hammer scene where everyone's trying to lift it, but it's said you can't lift Thor's hammer unless you're worthy enough. Captain America, obviously, is almost worthy, but I reckon it didn't lift because of Civil War, so that's that little, like, he is a really loyal and he would be able to lift it uh, without the Civil War that's obviously about to break out in Captain America 3. Um, but Vision, who's the new character that... Um, uh, Ultron builds, and then he's obviously got the gem, which is the um, one of the Infinity Stones, which came from Loki's scepter. And that the, the thing is that makes everyone trust, um, well, Thor at least, um, trust Vision, the Vision, is the fact he can list Thor's hammer. So if the hammer trusts him, then they all should too. And then they have a sort of relationship, because he's a space sort of alien person, so is Thor. So again, there's another relationship that brings up in this movie. It's the relationship between the Vision and Thor. So yeah, it's all about comedy, the relationships, and then the Infinity Stones, the main bits in the Marvel uh, build-up series with Avengers. Uh, here's um, a couple of clips that hopefully I can get without the copyright going mental. Uh, it's just a couple, like five seconds clips of everyone trying to lift Thor's hammer and uh, failing, obviously, because it's hard to do. And only Thor can do it because he's the only worthy one, allegedly. And then, obviously, um, Vision can do it. And Captain America can almost do it, and you can see that in a small clip, unless, obviously, um, Disney's copyrighted it. But let's let's just see how it goes. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Hawkeye can't do it. Never want to shrink from an honest challenge. Can we even pull me? Are you on my team? Just represent, Paul. All right, let's go. Iron Man, even with his suit, can't do it, so then he gets War Machine to help him. And, of course, they both can't do it, and they're using machines as well, so... No, Hawkeye can definitely not do it if Iron Man and War Machine, with their machines, can't do it. So, let's go to Hulk. <laughs> Again, comedy. Um, the Hulk's uh, pretending to actually get so angry he's turning into the Hulk in front of the room, but obviously... None of them find it very funny, because it's quite dangerous, obviously. Uh. Uh -huh. So, Hulk can't do it, um, well, in his human form, anyway. Um, when he actually turns into the Hulk, uh, even... Because he didn't actually transform in that clip, or in the whole movie, like, like that. He did, in the last movie, he did try and lift Thor's hammer in the Hulk version. He couldn't do it. He also tried to grab hold of it, and he went backwards. So... Hulk, in Hulk form, can't lift Thor's hammer, so that's just, I'm just putting it out there. This is where it gets a bit more interesting. Let's move on to Captain America. Come on, Cap. We all saw it move, Thor. Cap is now ruler of Asgard, so just hand him over the planet, hand him over all the kingdoms and everything. Captain America owns Asgard. Now, Thor, just give it to him. No, of course you won't, because you're Thor. 
and that that would make a very good movie. But you should give Captain America Asgard because that was what you promised. You said you could rule Asgard if you could lift the hammer, and he pretty much could. Cap, it's Civil War that let you down. If you never did Civil War, you could have been owning Asgard. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> It did move Thor. Deal with it. In the scene where the Vision uh, lifts Thor's hammer, it isn't as uh, comical. It, it's more, it's a serious scene. Um, the Vision's basically telling the Avengers they've lost unless they all work together. So it's a very serious scene. It's just comical. It's just, um, it's that subtle amusement because he's like handing Thor the hammer. It's like just all casually picks it up and gives it to him. It's like, Wow. So here's the clip, just uh, compare it to not being able to lift it, to just casually lifting it up. But we need to go. Apart from the obvious, um, where obviously he lifts up the hammer, I think the best thing in this uh, short clip it was the way they all just stare at um, Vision afterwards and the fact he's just lifted up the hammer. I mean, look at this image. I mean, they're all really, really serious. And I mean, if you look at Captain America, he's just almost uh, staring at Thor, like, in that direction. Like, oh my god, did you just see that? Is, is this actually happening? I mean, I think it's just real shock, and you can really believe what they're feeling at that moment. It's just, it's just one of those really good bits. So we've talked about the basic structure in this movie. It's got comic, uh, it's comedy, um, there's a relationship between all the characters again, and it's obviously about... Um, the Infinity Stones and the Nine Realms and all sorts of creation and all that malarkey. Uh, but what's the actual plotline? Well, you've got um, Stark wants to create um, a shield around the world, as he calls it. He wants to do a load of artificial intelligent robots that can protect the world when the Avengers aren't there, if they're on holiday or so on, but, or dead, uh, which is the main idea. So he creates... Um, this technology, he gets the idea from Loki's scepter, which stays on Earth for a few days, just because Thor wanted to party and all sorts. Uh, but yeah, he gets an idea to build artificial intelligence. Jarvis is told, um, because the artificial intelligence program isn't going very well at the moment, so Jarvis is told just to keep an eye on all things and uh, notify Tony if anything actually happens. And something does happen. Ultron, which is um, an artificial version, of Jarvis is built and he gets uploaded and he gets all confused. He thought um, that Tony wanted to destroy the world and that's what he was built for. Uh, but obviously that's not what he was built for. So he um, kills Jarvis, allegedly, but in the end he comes back and then he gets put inside J uh, Vision. Hence, uh, Vision sounds like Jarvis. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Spoilers. Um, but yeah, that's the gist of things. So then Ultron, obviously now he's got his own mind, he can teleport into anything because he can tr control the internet and all sorts. And obviously the government are worried about him doing missile strike or anything. But no, he doesn't do any missile strikes, that, that's just an average movie, that's what a DC movie would do. In this movie, he decides to build a massive meteor um, over Slovakia or um, somewhere, put it into the sky with massive jets, Put it really, really high when all the Avengers are on it. He wants the Avengers to die and everyone else on the planet. He wants, hence it's uh, Age of Ultron and it's meant to be the extinct, extinction day. So the meteor gets put really high in the sky and then basically Ultron or uh, one of his robots, he's built hundreds of them to fight the Avengers to stop them pressing a button which will stop it from happening. It'll just literally drop it. Uh, what he wants to do is get it to a certain height, then press the button. So when it falls, it creates an extinction level event and all humans die and then the world will be run by artificial intelligence robot. It's a bit like Terminator, but just more superhero Marvel stuff. So if this movie is very, very different to the first Avengers movie, apart from a few things. They've kept similar. There's always a fight scene at the end, but that's the same with all Marvel movies. But this fight scene is against robots and the Avengers. In the last Avengers movie, it was between aliens and the Avengers. Uh, so this is a pretty epic battle, and it looks impossible. We're in this, like, centre, which is the church, 
and you've got all the robots coming from every direction. And again, there's another circle scene where they're all fighting. Um, in the last Avengers movie, you've got the circle scene where it's theme music and all sorts. Um, but yeah, you've got a really epic scene. And then in the start of the, uh, the Age of Ultra on the movie, uh, you had the scene where they're all in the line, they're like, mm, going to punch them. And then the last scene, obviously they've got a circle, but this time they've got Vision and Iron Man and they're sort of flying, and it's more action-packed. It's, it's really got a gripping, like, motive. <laughs> So all in all, Avengers 2 Age of Ultron was an awesome movie. It, it, I, I kind of felt it was a bit of like a, it was a southern movie because you've got the Avengers 1 which is build up, you definitely needed that one. This one was more of a just to get some money and introduce the new characters which is only really introduced in the last five minutes of the movie and it's sort of revealing more of the plot line. So you didn't really need this movie, you could have added it on over to the last one or Captain America Civil War, or any of the other um, Phase 2 or 3 movies, or even just the start of um, the next Avengers movie. So you didn't really need it, but even if you didn't need it, I still thought it was a really good movie. So like all the Iron Mans, you didn't need all of them. You could have skipped them too and just had 1 and 3. Uh, well, obviously, 1 and 2 it would have been. But yeah, so this is a movie you didn't need, but it worked really, really well. Um... And the bit I'm interested in is the new characters, because obviously at the end it introduced some of the new characters, because Iron Man left, Thor went to another planet, and you're pretty much left with Captain America and Black Widow, and they're now the leaders of the new Avenger group. But what I'm interested in is, if, if Civil War actually happens, some of the new characters actually die in Civil War, so it's going to be a different Avengers team to what uh, I'm going to show in the next clip. And that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about in my next episode. I'm going to review the trailers for Avengers 3 and then kind of say who's going to actually be in the Avengers, the characters and what's going to happen in Civil War and how it's all going to link together. So um, here's my last clip. <laughs> Only disappointing bit about this scene, it ends with Avengers. It should be Avengers Assemble, but no, they leave that bit because everyone knows that line. Avengers! And they've used it quite a bit now, so they just left that. Uh, so it looks quite interesting. You've got uh, obviously Scarlet uh, Witch joining, you've got Captain America, Black Widow, um, and yeah, you've got some new characters. And it looks uh, really, really interesting, and I want to see how they do it. But obviously, in the next episode, I'm going to be talking about, obviously, in even in the trailer, it shows you one or two of them dying. But I'll talk about in that in my uh, next episode. Um, if you like the episode, please like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. Be my guest. Um, please comment on the video, see how I can improve, um, and subscribe. Remember, I really do need some subscribers. I've only got a couple at the moment. So if you watch my videos, might as well subscribe. Uh, so yeah, leave a comment, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching my video. Goodbye.